So earlier, we answered the question of what was the day with the highest temperature using only higher order methods. And we looked at several different ways of doing this. We saw that we could do it with a combination of a map uh, and a filter. We also did it with max by, and we did it using a reduce. I want to turn to a different question uh, this time. This deals with the precipitation. So in particular, I'm interested in the days that have one inch or more of precipitation. And first, I'd just like to get that uh, the number of them so that I can say what fraction of days have uh, an inch or more of precipitation. So I'll make a new variable called rainy count. And this is how many days have uh, one or more inches of, of precipitation. Now, we could calculate this in a few different ways. One would be to do a filter and then ask for the length. But of course, filter in a Scala collection is going to produce a whole new collection for us. And maybe I don't need that. And for just counting the days, I definitely don't. The Scala collections have another method called count, which is going to be more efficient for our purposes here. I want to count all the days where the, precip the precipitation is greater than or equal to 1.0. And then I can print line, uh, let's do some string interpolation. There are dollar rainy count rainy days. That is, and then uh, I'll go with a percent. And so inside of here, I'm going to do rainy days times 100.0 helps to make it become a double for the division or sorry not rainy days rainy count divided by data dot length okay if I run that So there's, in this data set, there are 575, which is 1.4% of the days have more, an inch or more of precipitation. Okay, um, that's, once again, this is for Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. Now we could do a similar question for snow, whatever. Uh, what I'm interested in doing now is saying, for those days, what is the average high temperature? Okay, now. Once again, we could calculate this in a number of different ways. We could do a filter and only find the rainy days, and then we could map them by their high temperature, and we could sum that, and then we could take the average. But if I do that, I'm doing three passes through the data. I would have a filter, followed by a map, followed by a sum. Um, now, the filter would make it smaller, but it who knows exactly how many things it would keep, and in this case we already know it's 575. The filter also does memory allocation to build that new collection. There's a fair bit of work that goes on there. I want to do this in a single pass, and one way to do that is with a fold operation. Now we saw a reduce when we were calculating the hot days. The thing with reduce is that reduce only works with the type in the collection. As it goes through, it can basically be used to either select or it could be used to combine things but it has to use that same type. A fold can introduce another type, uh, a type that we are using for accumulating data. And so, let's see, I'm going to call this rainy, uh, actually, we're going to get back two values, um, a rainy sum and a rainy uh, count in a different way. Let's call this rainy count two. It should be the same as the other rainy count, but in case we hadn't calculated this, because once again, this count is a whole pass through the collection, and I want to try to get the average through a single pass through the collection. To get an average, I need the sum of all the precipitation, or I need the sum of the temperatures for the rainy days, and I need to divide that by how many rainy days there were. Once again, I want to do this in a single pass. And I can do this with a fold operation. Now, as you can see here on this menu, there are three different fold operations. Because we're switching types, we need a fold left or a fold right. They work, they have a type B in addition to A is what's in the collection. I'm going to use a fold left. 
And the way that fold left works is it runs through the collection starting with the a zero value, that's what the Z stands for here, and aggregating values as we go. Now I need two values out, and the fact that I put this val here with two values in parentheses tells you that I am producing a tuple. Okay? The tuple is going to start off with zero, zero. I have nothing in my sum, I have nothing in my count. Uh, so I need this to be a tuple. I'm going to write it like that. Uh, let's see, our precipitation is a double. The count doesn't matter. I'm perfectly happy with, with just zero as an integer. Instead of writing this with the arrow, I could have put an extra set of parentheses. Note that I can't say 0.0, .0 comma zero. Uh, once we put our operator in here, this would be unhappy. I would have to put an extra set of parentheses in order to make a tuple. This is just a syntactic style difference. Personally, I don't like the double parentheses all that much, so I would go with this. And another thing we can do here is instead of writing a standard uh, function in parentheses, I can use curly braces and a case to do pattern matching. Because the argument that comes into a fold is two things, so a comma b. A though is our accumulator, which is a tuple. So I can call that sum and count. And then b is one of our temperature datas as we are running through the collection. And what do I want to return here? Well, if, to, if the day I'm looking at, if TD isn't a rainy day, I would want to give back the exact same value that was passed in because it doesn't count. It doesn't add to my sum, it doesn't add to my count. So I can say if td.precip is less than 1.0, I am going to give back a tuple of sum and count. Okay. Else, well, in that case, my this day should count towards things, so I want to increment my sum by tmax, and I want to increment my count by one and pass that through. So let's do a print line and say average rainy temp is and inside of here we're going to say rainy sum divided by rainy count two. This fold left does a single pass through the collection and it will build our tuple here so that we get the sum as a double and the count as an integer and it tells us that on average the high temperatures for rainy days are 70 degrees. So this shows, shows you kind of the use of one of the fold operations. That was kind of one of the things that I wanted to highlight here. Count isn't as generally applicable. It's good if you want to count up things. Turns out that we don't really have an equivalent for Spark. But the folding is essential to understand. And we're going to come back to this concept of folding and also look at what we have to do, how we have to modify things when we do this in a parallel manner when we start talking about, about the Spark environment.